My name is Tando Matalambani. Most people know me as Zozi. I was born and raised in East London in a township called Mdantani. Today I will be speaking about LGBTQIA community with you guys. LGBT is an acronym meaning lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. The term sometimes is extended to LGBTQIA to include queer, intersex, and asexual groups. I'm going to give you guys a brief story about myself. Growing up in my township in Dantani, I come from a family background. I was raised by my both parents. My father was very traditional. Uh, I had uh, loving parents, uh, just like any child. I won't speak much about my childhood because when you are still growing up, you don't understand what is going on with your body or yourself, who you are attracted to or not. So I'll just bring you guys a summary of my journey in this community. Um, I had friends just like any small boy. I had my straight friends growing up. I would go and chill and do all boy stuff. At home, I did chores like everyone else when they are growing up. And I was unfortunate because at home there were no boys or girl chores. We did everything that you were supposed to do at home. But my mom could see that I was a bit soft, I would say, because she always wanted me to be inside the household. So I would always cook and clean the house. And my father would say, hey, was I emotional in now you know how fathers can be. Then I reached a time where I had to go to the mountain as I am a closer guy. So I went to initiation school. Uh, briefly, when I was growing up, um, you know, most how small kids can be so mean. Uh, I don't know how did they see it because we are all still kids. But you, there were those names that I was called. Uh, many people in this community will attest to what I'm going to say. Uh, the movie names, the gay name was not that popular back then because we were still little kids. So the the most common one was movie or sis booty. So I was called those names, even though my straight friends had no problem with that because I was still their friend. So I went to initiation school having that um childhood whereas i am like i'm some kind different to the other boys but i was still confused of what is going on with me uh, i went to the initiation school and there we find that there are things that are being done you are trained most to become a man and we do work there and you find hard work and you find soft work. I was given soft work because I think they they saw through me, Ubana. Okay, Utando is this kind of a person. But I won't lie, I was never discriminated Sutwini, Ebakweteni. Then we came back, Sangamakwala. And then I was doing grade 12 then. Then I started to, to notice that, okay, all of my friends now are having girlfriends and I don't. Then I think I had that sense of wanting to belong. I, I then said, okay, why not? Then I started dating girls. I think I had two or three girlfriends, but it was not something that was romantic. 
I was not romantically involved with them. It was just, I was still a kid. I did not know what what would happen after having a girl because I was still as, as a small kid. But as time went by, the, the, the words keep on See the cooler when oh we move when and I wanted to know when I in Tony move and back then he move was described as someone who was in the into Bazana. So people were calling me in those names because I was like a girl dancing in and I was so confused when what's going on with me. Then it ends like why am I like this? I'm confused and I cannot speak with my parents because my parents are so traditional. I had not uh uh denying denial bond to talk with my parents to find out when I, what's going on up until I got to to be associated with the people in this community. I started having gay friends and then I saw good to oh I am not alone into this. Then uh, I started to 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 believe in myself. I started to be utando. Then my friends started to stray away from me. They started to isolate me because I was like not part of them anymore. They they did not see that we had common things because now um I'm too gayly and I'm having these gay friends, so I was different to them. So they isolated themselves to me and i was fine with it because now i had people in this community so i had some um some kind of in abandon that i relate to so i was fine with myself and then i accepted who i am and then that how my journey was and i can tell you that i never came out to my parents or to tell them that okay moms and dad I'm like this never and I think our parents see through us mana okay our son is different from the others he is not like the 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 son that we wish to have but they were fine with it even though they'd never ask even though my father would tease me sometimes and say no man how can Usale Espilini and put on makeup and do those those kind of things and my mother would come to my rescue and say, no, just let the kid be. So I never came out to my parents up to this day that I am gay. But I did come out to 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 my friends that okay guys, I am I'm gay, I'm attracted to guys. And at first it was a shock to them, but some said, Oh. So move and people would always call you that, but we don't have a problem with that. Even though okay, but I saw like even further Then life went on. So today I'm gonna talk about this community that I am in. LGBTQIA. It's a very broad community, guys. So I was given two things to talk to you guys about. The first one is, what are some of the rights we feel are violated, particularly when it comes to this community, LGBTQIA? And to me, I would say the biggest one for me is homophobia, guys. When I say that, I mean taking the word homosexual and use it as a tool to insult. As I've said, Anna, I was called names. And I see this in females more than males. These things start as being jokes and little kids always look around to see what adults are doing and adapt because they are not matured enough to know what is right or wrong. I should be doing this, I should not be doing this to infringe somebody else's feelings. 
and small kids get I see everything that happens around our communities and households and believes in them, especially if it's done by an adult and they keep it in their minds. Moreover, when it's done by someone who they look up to. For instance, social media. <laughs> when, when I talk of social media, wow. Like in social media, when there is a post of a very neat, clean guys, you find comments like, why guys, you can't be like this. The replies we get to see in those posts. You as a movie, that's an African slang for a movie, especially if you are a clean and cute and you get to be insulted that you are gay. And also if a guy is very slow with girls approaching them, the very same girls insult him. You, that one is gay, suka. Even in seeing someone walking down the street, elokshin gengoku, wearing skinny jeans and tight tops, you get to be associated with being gay. Like the word is associated with being something very, like, not normal, even if you are not gay. Even adults would throw shades like you, our kids, abandana to nazi mufi, and you get to see there is some sort of narrative that has an intention to put the word gay under a dark cloud, that it, it is a bad thing. And Gelondo guys leads to cause a homophobia in little kids and also cause adults not to come out, those that are in closet together with those ones that know they are gay. But Babe afraid of what the community will think of them and say. Um, just not so long ago on Mojo Love Show, there was a guy that, that was caught in bed with in another guy. Yo, the insults people were, were saying towards bisexual people. How selfish the guy can be. How can he put the girlfriend? the girlfriend that took the guy to the show in that situation. Why can't someone know they do girls or guys? So all of these discrimination guys leads in people being violated and not coming out. You find Abanya Besiti, these gays are finishing our men. <laughs> what men? It becomes a big joke, a dictatory joke. You are called all names that I can't say. So it is not encouraging for people that want to come out. It is not encouraging for small kids that are still confused with their sexuality because our communities mock us. And this is some, and this in some cases causes people to be suicidal. And also, some rights gay guys are violated by our own community, specifically gay looking at the LGBTQI community. We violate some of our rights. Um, I feel like there are lots of rights violations that queer members face. Um, the first one, or the third or the fourth one, <laughs> would be the right to sexual orientation. And I feel like all other violations are rooted from this one. We are not given a platform to express our sexuality, especially in our patriarchal black communities, where you find the society wanting to give us an identity that seems perfect for us. Hence, you find that even amongst us queer members, we are forever justifying ourselves and identify ourselves with that patriarchal system of saying, uh, I'm top, that's a game term, care for being a guy, which kind of seems as strong, mainly and bold, and some would say, I'm bottom, a girl, which gives the impression of a vulnerable, weak, feminine person 
and that leads us in forgetting that being queer means that sexual orientation is fluid. Um, the level of discrimination that we received is just unbelievable, especially in leadership positions, be it at church, be it at work, um, be it at, in our communities, our level of power and ability to think is always weighed or reduced to our sexuality. Um, it does not matter how good you are. And if you are a specialist or you are not, but because people know your sexual preference, they assume that you are not equal to the task and even themselves can't explain their reasoning behind it. And then now I was given the second topic on how can communities help with these discrimination or I would say violations. And then I would say, nah, if we sit and wait for communities to start thinking of how to end this, we will wait till Jesus comes. Um, the best way would be us being involved in all programs that involve our community. Um, during apartheid, Miriam Akema once said, I quote, there are different communities in South Africa. I will speak my community, the black community, close quote, which simply means guys, only us members of the queer community would know how to do this. The first thing is educating people about who we are this can only be done if we ourselves embrace each other. Uh, I mean by embracing, by educating and having open discussions and conversations, educating them about who we are. Um, and lastly, when we fail to acknowledge the existence of LGBTIQ in our communities, uh, we will forever have what you guys call after nines, all for fear of its explanation. Let us love and treat each other the way we would want to be treated. Thank you. Hi, my name is Venetian Naidu. I'm with Legal Aid South Africa, Port Elizabeth office. South Africa is one of the first countries to decriminalize uh, same-sex marriages um, on the continent actually of Africa and in terms of section 9 of our constitution uh, the rights of gay people and gay persons and all of those in the LGBTI community are all guaranteed um, so none of these people can be discriminated against um, on the basis of sexual orientation and never, and never should it be. However, having said that, um, we live in a, especially in South Africa, a strong uh, patriarchal uh, society. Uh, so we have South Africa as a country having to walk a tightrope, uh, the proverbial tightrope in um, enforcing or protecting uh, our constitution and the values enshrined in our constitution and having solidarity with the rest of the African continent which remain unfortunately uh, largely homophobic. Um, we know that countries like Nigeria and uh, Uganda have actually enforced harsher um, criminal penalties for homophobic uh, behavior and we know that the LGBTI community are heavily uh, discriminated against in these countries and um, it's seen as a criminal offense. It's unfortunate in the past that South Africa has chosen sometimes to err on the side of diplomacy or quiet diplomacy. Uh, a couple of instances come to mind in previous years where uh, a few years ago, our um, uh, ambassador to the U United Nations uh, refused to go along with uh, France's uh, resolution to uh, 
decriminalize uh, legislation in countries uh, that strictly enforce uh, segregation and, and discrimination based, based on sexual orientation. Uh, regrettably, this has happened twice before, but uh, we're dealing with a situation now where South Africa is slowly but surely coming to the fore with regards to protecting the rights of the LBGTI community. And please forgive me if I get it wrong sometimes, uh, because it is an ever-increasing acronym. Um, we have a situation, basically, as Tondo mentioned, in South Africa, which is a sort of sui generis situation uh, to the African continent, because we have um, African persons who are brought up in very strong patriarchal society based on... Um, you know, Western Christian, Judeo-Christian values, which uh, strongly are against um, gay persons, so to speak. And growing up in these type of environments uh, could not be easy because of the stigma attached to it and parents enforcing children not to be um, entertained in a certain way and not to grow up in a certain way which has left many of our, of our colleagues and, and countrymen and, and people in the LGBTI community feeling victimized and alone. And as correctly pointed out, this has obviously led to many occasions where suicide has been the unfortunate um, consequence of this victimization. Uh, one would then have to then consider, but what do we as South Africans need to do uh, to engender uh, discourse? And this is exactly what it means. It means having, having open and frank discussions with community leaders, with uh, taking out the stigma, uh, so-called a stigma of, of being a person from the LGBTI community, uh, to having an, an educational-based um, discourse with with elders with with people in in the patriarchal community that uh, we you know we, we cannot be discriminated against in in a particular way such as such as just merely because we have a different sexual orientation um, that we should be treated any uh, different to our fellow uh, colleagues and, 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 and people so it is unfortunate that there is still a ways to go, but I think South Africa is at the forefront. Um, we, I think, held our first uh, gay pride festival on the 10th of October 1990 in Johannesburg, and this has slowly but surely in increased over time. And I think the more discussion there is and the more uh, that people can approach you know, the LGBTI community for help and support in instances where there has been gross uh, victimization, that it is only through engagement with role players that one will be able to destigmatize uh, and prevent uh, victimization of, of persons uh, merely because of their sexual orientation. Uh, I think that Legal Aid South Africa is a bastion, as a bastion of our, of our constitution, will readily uh, enforce uh, the constitutional values enshrined and be there as a form of protection and, and not only protection, but in, in highlighting the equality between those in the LGBT community and those of us who, who are not and I think it comes with understanding and a sense of wanting to understand they unfortunately will be those that have a dogmatic character and nature will refuse to want to engage on the issues but that is to be expected uh, as in any vice in, sort of in, in the world you are going to have uh, people that do not agree and do not want to agree or do not wish to understand the situation. Hopefully in time uh, the number of these people will diminish 
um, so that we have a situation where there will be equality uh, and freedom for all and that those people who are in our LGBTR community will no longer feel victimized but will be allowed to to express themselves in the in, in the appropriate environment. The remedies available to persons that are discriminated against based on sexual orientation, uh, especially those relating to the LGBTI community, is uh, is quite broad, um, and uh, it's very difficult to make an exact uh, determination what the remedies are. But if it's, for example, discrimination in the workplace, then Obviously, one can approach the labor court. Uh, if it's general discrimination or um, words being uttered to a to the victim, if I may place it that way, then you know one can approach the 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 court in terms of the harassment act. Um, furthermore, one could most definitely approach the Human Rights Commission to launch a specific investigation. Uh, in which terms they will investigate and probably proceed uh, in the Equality Court or the victim could actually then just launch proceedings in the Equality Court as well with regards to such discriminatory attitude or words being utilised. Uh, in, in a nutshell, I think there needs to be greater discourse on the subject and engagement between um, the community, the LGBTI community, and, and, and stakeholders and role players so that uh, we can engage on issues and, 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 and people will begin to know and understand uh, what the members of the LGBTI community actually go through because I think a lot of the time many people don't understand the victimization that, uh, that, uh, that does happen. Thank you.